Theater was built in 1904, and it was built because at the time Huntington uh, was a railroad crossover town, so there were a lot of people staying the night here. And when it originally opened, it had 1,400 seats uh, and played to sold out houses and had touring companies through uh, all the time. It had a big vaudeville stage and two balconies and such. Um, by the end of the 30s, they'd really stopped showing the live shows and were just showing mainly films. And they were the first theater in the area to stop doing live shows completely. And then in 1999, about 60 years later, they, uh, the theater was sold to a multiplex chain. And later that year, the theater was sold by the multiplex to a local preservation couple. And they bought it so that they could save the building, basically, because the fear was that the building would be torn down and turned into a parking lot or something like that. And then in 2007, uh, bought the theater and came here. And our original plan was to work for several years and restore the whole theater and open up the large theater. Uh, we never really intended on doing the supper club shows originally. But after being here about six months, uh, the community members were constantly saying, oh, we want you to do a show, we want you to do something, and they showed a real interest in what we were doing. So when we finished the lobby, we said to ourselves, well, we have a space, we can try doing something different with the space. Uh, why don't we try doing these cabaret shows and see if people enjoy them? And, you know, well, we didn't expect that they would take off or people would enjoy them as much as they do. We wanted to lay very low when we first came here because we didn't want to sort of, um, tell everybody, oh, we're doing this great thing and it's going to be wonderful and then it, and then, you know, not have the goods to show for it. And we intended on laying very low, but we sort of got on people's radar much sooner than we intended. The fact that they sort of haven't given up on us in terms of the amount of time that it's taken, the fact that people, I think, do understand that it's very different doing it as a personal endeavor for two people um, rather than a civic project with civic funds. We basically, you know, renovate until there's no more money and then we have to wait and then we have to start up again. Um, people were very excited at something that was outside of the box that could be good for downtown. In certain ways, I think we still feel a little bit like outsiders, but I think that in terms of the artistic work that we're trying to do, people are very grateful and very enthusiastic and really hope the best for us, which is wonderful. The Supper Club lets us do what we love to do in a different way than we're used to doing it. The Supper Club is this really interesting animal that I think Rich and I are the most proud of because it's something that didn't exist. We sort of had to look at the space. People started asking us to begin doing shows years before we were ready to. Um, and we sort of had to create this weird little animal. We had no idea if it would work. And I think that's been, uh, that means a lot, that we sort of created this thing out of nothing. Um, and people have managed to support it and over and over again, and it seems to embrace you know, new audiences, and that's been really interesting. You know, it makes it makes us feel like they understand and appreciate what we do and give value to it, which is, which is really nice. Um, and there's people that come to the shows, have been here since the very first show that we did, and we kind of know them. You know, and uh, through the twenty some odd shows that we've done here, that they've been to every single one of them, and we've spoken to them and know things about them, and they know things about us, and it's it's kind of a community that way. Went down to Nick's for. Ten morning supper, and then we came down here, and Nick and Joel showed us around and what they had planned and all that, and we, we just, were hooked. We was hooked. <laughs> My vision for the theater is to create a place where both the audience and the performers have an ex have an extraordinary experience, um, where we can produce work and put together work that the performers are proud of and the audiences enjoy and learn from. And we, we want to be a place where people want to come, whether it's you want to come to work here or you want to come to see the shows here. Uh, and we believe that by doing high quality work and maintaining quality standards, that we can create that atmosphere and environment for both the patrons and, and the performers. Well, I think it's great. Uh, we have friends in Dayton, Ohio, and we go to the theaters and shows over there. And uh, I think it's nice that a town our size can offer the same thing and just as good or better than going to a bigger city. In the end, I think we know when we're done with it, we're gonna have something that no one else has that's uniquely ours and 
will just give us returns for the rest of our lives. It's not always easy, but there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. And there's always the, the hope and dream that when we're done, we will have something that we can look at and be very proud of and will have for a very long time. Well, the Huntington Theatre was built in 1904, and it was built because at the time, Huntington uh, was a railroad crossover town, so there were a lot of people staying the night here. And when it originally opened, it played sold-out houses and had touring companies through. By the end of the 30s, they'd really stopped showing the live shows and were just showing mainly films. And then in 1999, about 60 years later, they, uh, the theatre was sold to a multiplex chain. And later that year, the theater was sold by the multiplex to a local preservation couple, and they bought it so that they could save the building, basically, because the fear was that the building would be torn down and turned into a parking lot or something like that. And then in 2007, I uh, bought the theater and came here. And our original plan was to work for several years and restore the whole theater and open up the large theater. Uh, we never really intended on doing the supper club shows originally, but after being here about six months, uh, the community members were constantly saying, oh, we want you to do a show, we want you to do something, and they showed a real interest in what we were doing. So when we finished the lobby, we said to ourselves, well, we have a space, we can try doing something different with the space. Uh, why don't we try doing these cabaret shows and see if people enjoy them? And, you know, we didn't expect that they would take off or people would enjoy them as much as they do. We wanted to lay very low when we first came here because we didn't want to sort of, um, tell everybody, oh, we're doing this great thing and it's going to be wonderful and then it, and then, you know, not have the goods to show for it. And we intended on laying very low, but we sort of got on people's radar much sooner than we intended. The fact that they sort of haven't given up on us in terms of the amount of time that it's taken, the fact that people, I think, do understand that it's very different doing it as a personal endeavor for two people um, rather than a civic project with civic funds. We basically, you know, renovate until there's no more money and then we have to wait and then we have to start up again. My vision for the theater is to create a place where both the audience and the performers have an, ex have an extraordinary experience. Um, where we can produce work and put together work that the performers are proud of and the audiences enjoy and learn from. And we, we want to be a place where people want to come, whether it's you want to come to work here or you want to come to see the shows here. Uh, and we believe that by doing high quality work and maintaining quality standards that we can create that atmosphere and environment for both the patrons and, and the performers. In the end, I think we know when we're done with it, we're gonna have something that no one else has that's uniquely ours and be very proud of and will have for a very long time. <laughs>